In this topic, we are going to talk about the situational requirements for selection criteria for international assignments. In the previous topic, we had talked about the individual requirements. What are the requirements that the individual must possess to be selected for an international assignment? Uh, in this topic, we are going to talk about the situational requirements uh, that are those requirements or those uh, factors which are important to take into account regarding the situation. For example, what type of country they, that person is going to, what type of multinational it is, uh, what type of uh, language requirements would be there. So uh, these are the situational requirements which are important to be taken into account while selecting a person for international assignment. So the selection criteria must take into account these situational requirements. So let's take a look what are the various different types of selection requirements. The first in, uh, situational requirement for selection for an international assignment is the country or the cultural requirements. Um, the country requirements could vary from uh, different governmental requirements to the cultural and societal requirements of that place, including uh, various different cultural dynamics that are over there. Uh, so uh, the country requirements could be the work visa and permit for a desired uh, parent country national or a third country national. So it should be important to note that whether a person would be given a visa or work permit to work in that place or not. Uh, then work visas for spouse is also another factor which should be taken into account if that country does not give work visa to the spouse. That means that it would be a limiting factor for, uh, for sending a person to that international assignment. Uh, host country is a very important determinant. Some regions and countries are considered as hardship postings. Uh, so um, countries which have different, uh, which, which have difficult environment, which have difficult cultures, which are um, torn with terrorism, which have uh, different kind of uh, other problems, for example, uh, uh, disease epidemics, for example, in America, there are certain uh, countries which are affected by various different diseases such as Congo virus or um, other type of uh, such kind of diseases. So these areas, they are considered to be hardship areas. So the host country is a huge determinant whether a person would be interesting and willing to go to that particular location or not. Uh, so your selection criteria would be quite limited in case the country is a hardship area and people would not be ready to um, accept postings to that place and therefore you need to um, develop such kind of um, uh, packages which could provide incentives or you have to make sure uh, you have to give them this kind of assurance that uh, your requirements and your safety will be taken into account and what you are doing to ensure uh, their safety and, uh, and their well-being. Uh, so host country is a very important determinant, particularly in case it is a hardship country. On the other hand, if it is a country which people want to go to, uh, then uh, you would have a lot better pool of people who would be interesting to take up that international assignment. So this is a very important factor. Uh, then the second type of uh, situational requirement belongs to the multinational uh, itself. Uh, and multinational um, uh, requirements could include the mode of operation. So as we discussed in previous topics, whether it is a joint venture, whether, whether it is a merger or an acquisition, that particular type of setting that would, uh, that would set the stage for what type of international assignments can you send your people to? And then what is the duration and type of assignment that you are, uh, um, that you are sending your uh, expatriates? And the amount of knowledge transfer. How much knowledge do you need to transfer to the, you know, to, to the, to the other uh, country 
that is also important if you don't need to transfer a lot of knowledge from your parent country to the host country then uh, it is quite flexible you can also hire uh, host country nationals but if you need to transfer a lot of knowledge from the headquarters to your uh, host country then you would need to hire a, a parent country nationals for that particular postings all right then language is another very important aspect in some situations it is, in, is it is important in some situations it may be less important for example if it is the same region uh, it may not be really important to uh, take into account the language barriers for example if you are sending somebody from pakistan to uk a lot of people in pakistan they are very much familiar and conversant with the english language but if you are sending somebody to japan or somebody to germany uh german language or japanese language is not something that pakistani people would be really familiar with so you may need to give them that kind of training and that kind of uh, awareness about that particular language earlier language was considered to be a mechanical and manageable problem uh and uh, that individual would, would take care of it themselves so, so it was considered to be a responsibility of the individual itself but uh, now it is considered as a situational requirement so that the ma the 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 match between the person and the job that he is taking up is basically um, uh, is according to the language requirements of that particular position as well as that of the person uh selection tests are therefore used uh to select uh, uh people who are uh, appropriate and the selection test uh, the appropriateness of the selection test is something which also uh, determines how well you are able to select people for your international assignments so there is a varying validity of selection tests then different countries they have a different type of tradition about use of these selection tests and uh, selection is basically based on the subjective nature of these uh, characteristics um and the subjective nature of these characteristics is actually then um defined in a model of selection criteria in which there are four types of selection criteria which are defined which must be taken into account while you are selecting a person for an international assignment uh, so there are four selection criteria uh, to be tested in the selection test one is the self oriented dimension the degree to which an expatriate expresses an adaptive concern for self preservation self enjoyment and mental hygiene so this is a kind of tendency that a person is able to manage his own emotions manage his own self and is able to adapt to different situation uh, then second dimension is the perceptual dimension which is the expertise the expatriate possesses in accurately understanding why host nationals behave the way they do so it is about the perception of the person that he is able to create the right perception about people who are in the host country belonging to a different culture and working in a different environment he has the ability to perceive the way the th uh, uh, to perceive that the way they are doing things why they are doing it that way for example if they are bowing in front of you and that is happening in japan the person would know that this is something that is very much cultural in japan uh then the third dimension of uh, this selection criteria is other oriented di uh, dimension so it is very much self explanatory that this dimension is about orientation toward other people so it is about the empathy so it is the degree to which the expatriate is concerned about host nationals co-workers and desire to affiliate with them so it is other uh, oriented dimension the person is ready to affiliate is ready to make connection is ready to make relationships and is ready to accept that these are also equal people and they are uh, uh, and what are their problems what could be what could, could be their issues and uh, is ready to empathize with those people of those of the host country and finally the fourth dimension is the cultural toughness dimension which is the mediating variable that recognizes that acculturation is affected by the degree to which culture of host country is incongruent with that of the uh, home country 
so uh, cultural toughness is actually the difference between the host country and the uh, and and the parent country if the difference is too high then cultural toughness is obviously something which is too high and if the difference between the host country and the national country and, and the parent country is low it means that the cultural toughness is low and that means that the person who is moving from the parent country to the host country will not have to pay, face a lot of difficulties in adjusting and understanding the other culture but if it is a tough culture if the cultural toughness is high that means that the person would need to be given a lot of first of all training and then he would have to be culturally adaptive to actually understand the differences between parent country culture and the host country culture so these are the four dimensions on which a person's ability to be selected for an international assignment is uh, would be assessed so in this topic we have discussed about the situational requirements of selection for an international assignment